Hi guys, welcome to the Bridge City Church online experience. My name is Michaela. And I'm Maria. And we are so incredibly happy that you are spending your day with us. Listen, if you are new here, we just wanna say hello. So there's gonna be a link somewhere on your screen. Make sure you click that and fill it out. Let us know a little bit about yourself and we wanna send you a $5 Starbucks gift card on us. Just as a thank you for spending your day with us. Get a pumpkin spice latte on us. It's that fall season. Oh yeah. So yeah. Um, Maria, what are some events that are going to be coming up? We actually have Victory and Freedom coming up. And if you don't know what Victory and Freedom is, all the details are on the screen. And you can learn more at our website, bridgecitypgh.com. But when I experienced Victory and Freedom three years ago, I know that I'm still walking in the freedom that I experienced that day and the victory that I experienced that day. I dealt with secrets, my deepest, darkest secrets. I never thought I would tell anyone. They helped me at Victory and Freedom. They helped me get rid of those things, walk in freedom through Jesus Christ. So if you've never been, I highly highly recommend checking it out. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and transition into our time of worship. I'll go ahead and say a quick prayer before we start. Um, so Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful that we get the opportunity to spend this time with you, to worship you. I pray that you'll be with us wherever we are, um, that you'll be present, and thank you for giving us the freedom to just be able to worship you um, in our space. Um, in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. How are we doing out there today? If you're joining us online or here in person, we're so glad you're here with us. Won't you stand? Let's get ready to worship our God in this place. Come on. I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. And praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered, I'll praise when surrounded, cause praise is the water, my enemies drowning, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord for my soul. I praise when I don't. I praise cause I know you're still in control. God, praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing. This is why we praise today. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, sing it out. I won't. 
Because of your love for me Oh my God, so good 
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause He's never let me down. He's faithful. So why would he fail now? He won't. Cause I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Christ is my firm foundation. His rain came when blue my house was built on you. I'm saved when you I'm gonna make it through. His rain came when blue my house was built on you. And I Say with you, I'm gonna make it. The rain came, rain came, wind blew. My house was built on you. I'm saved.
I've got one response I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide Come on, my soul. Well, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, come on, my soul. But don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion.
Well, now we're going to go ahead and move into another form of worship, which is tithes and offerings. The ways that you can give are going to be on the screen. God calls us to be generous givers, and we're just giving back to him what he already gave to us. And it's a declaration of saying, I'm putting my trust in you. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the ways that you can give are going to be on the screen. Highly recommend it. 10 out of 10. I've seen God move in so many incredible ways um, by just giving him my finances. He has shown up in so many unexpected situations. And if you've never tithed before, I highly, highly recommend it. Again, we're just giving God back what he gave us. Mm -hmm. We're gonna continue now with our series, The Fear of God. This is one of my favorite series that we've done in a long time at Bridge City. I've learned so much through this series in just three weeks. I've learned that I didn't actually have a healthy fear of God. I think that I was more, I didn't understand it, so I think I was more scared mm. yeah. of God. It was taking the, that word fear and turning it into like being scared, but that's actually not what this means. It's having a healthy, holy fear of God. And now with an understanding of it, I'm so excited to see what God's gonna do through me and through the church now too. Amen, that's so good. For me personally, I learned that God wants to bestow so many amazing rewards on us whenever we are face to face with Him. And being saved is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. God has so many incredible things that He wants to do for us and through us in our walk on earth. And we just have to trust Him. And I believe that that fear of God really allows us to open up our hearts to Him and love what He loves, hate what He hates. Yep. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just really, really excited to continue this series. Yeah, so let's jump in. Once again, church, so glad that you're with us here. Fear of God. Hey, this is the last in this series, and this series has been so, so awesome. And today, we just want to talk about obedience, about the commands of God. Now, I don't know about what your response is when you hear obedience or command or statutes or decrees or laws. I'm not sure what exactly that brings up in you, but for many of us, it's not a very good first thought. But let me put it to you this way. What if I were to tell my wife, Natalie, been married, there'll be 34 years coming up here, is this, is that, listen, out of all the days of the year, I want to take 10 days and I want to get to do whatever I want with whomever I want, however I want. And, uh, but I get to do this and you're not allowed to ask me about it. I get to do whatever I want. I can literally do it. And would that be a good idea? And she would say, no. I said, okay, well, how about I just cut it down to seven? How about seven days a year? I get to do whatever I want with whomever I want, however I want. And I have a feeling Natalie would say that's not a good idea too. Okay, how about three? How about one? Would one day a year I can do whatever I want with whomever I want, however, and I don't have to tell you, no rules, no regulations, nothing. Would that be okay? No. Then why is that okay with us and God when it comes to his commands, when it comes to obedience? See, many of us, we treat it like this. The, obe the, the commands that we like, we grab a hold of. But the commands that we don't and the obedience that we're not sure of, we just kind of put aside and say, well, that's just a preference. I'm going to get around to that. It's okay. See, even one day away from the devotion to God, doing whatever we want, is not a good relationship. Because God expects total obedience. What does this have to do with the fear of God? 
Let's go to the verses that we've been launching from every single week here. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13, 14. Now this is the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and, underline and there, underline and, there it is, and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, good or bad. So, just want to catch you up. Maybe you didn't catch this in previous weeks here. What is the fear of God? The fear of God is to revere, to be completely in awe of him, to hallow him, to respect him, to esteem, to honor, to be so close to God's heart that we love what he loves and we hate what he hates, but it's also to live in obedience to God. So the fear of God is connected to obeying God. It's been stated that there's somewhere in, in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, at least 300 times in the New Testament alone, there are 300 commands. That's right, 300 commands, not suggestions, not I hope you get around to it, not a, I hope that God grades on the curve, no, commands of God. And so the commands of God are, are joyful and, they're, and they're, they're good for us here. The obedience is important and obedience the first time is even more important. I learned obedience. I learned the fear of God and obedience actually through my dad. My dad was a, uh, a, a tall man. He was a big, broad man. He was a bricklayer, so he had, he had very rough hands. I remember that as a, as a child from, from the work that he did. But I, I recognized the fear of God in my father, and I wanted to obey because I wanted to, to have a relationship with him. So it wasn't, so yes, it was detrimental because when I disobeyed, there was a disconnect, but when I obeyed, we were closer. Just a thought, that's how I learned it. Here's the big idea for today. Here it is. Those who fear God will obey his word. When will we do it? We'll do it immediately, we will do it completely, and we will do it joyfully. Three things there we wanna cover. So those who fear God will obey his word. Let's start off talking about God's word. God's word here. Now, God's word in Isaiah chapter 66 here, Isaiah 66, I will bless those who have humble and contrite hearts who tremble at my word. Tremble, literally, like, first of all, I will bless is to look, to watch, regard. God looks he watches, he regards, he pays close attention. But this word tremble is this, catch this. It's to dread, to dread awe, it is fear. But it's, it's also this, to be startled by an alarm. When we encounter the word of God, it should startle us. It should be like an alarm going off. It's like, whoa, like, like wait a minute, it's, it's a wake up call. The word of God is a wake-up call, and God is looking for those that when they obey him, and there's other things in this verse here. There's humility, and there's a contrite heart. But those who obey and tremble at his word, I want to be somebody that trembles at the word of God. Yeah, that's what I want to do. It's a wake-up call. Philippians 2.12, yeah, the apostle Paul, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, always obeyed, has actually the connotation of unconditional obedience. That means always obeying. Yeah, not in my presence only, but now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. As we encounter God's word, there should be a trembling to this. As we really listen to, as we really adhere, that's what we're going to do. So, the word of God is the, is, it, 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 we need that in our lives because those who have the fear of God will have a reverence for the word of God. Now, we are all on a journey. We're all on a road. And we're walking, uh, we're following Jesus Christ, we're doing it with other people, and we are on this road. But, but this one road that we're on that leads to heaven, and, and one road that leads with Jesus, has a, two ditches, one on each side. So one road, two ditches. 
on one, in one ditch is legalism. That means um, self-righteous, holiness. It's all about what I do, what I can do. It's about rules. Obey the rules. And if you obey the rules, then that makes you right. And God's going to bless you. In the other ditch is a word I'm going to use, lawlessness. Now that means like I can do whatever I want. There's no real laws and commands of God. I'm going to even use maybe maybe a hyper grace or a hyper mercy, a hyper forgiveness. So in one ditch is people that are in legalism. In decades ago, maybe four or five decades, legalism was very prevalent in Jesus' church. It was all about doing the right thing. It was all about, all about the rules, all about getting it right. But we have swung so far that now we have, we're in the ditch mainly of lawlessness, which there's no real rules of God. He loves everybody, no problem. And the people in the legalism ditch are yelling over the road into the lawlessness ditch, hey, you're wrong. And the lawless people, which are all about God's love and God loves everybody and God grades on the curve, they're yelling at the, law, the legalism people saying, you're wrong. But I'm going to tell you, we, this is what we need here. This is what we really, really need to catch here. The love of God keeps us from legalism. The love of God. But the fear of God keeps us from lawlessness. So one road, two ditches. We need to stay out of legalism where it's all about rules and by the love of God pulls us out. The love of God motivates us to stay out. But the fear of God keeps me away from lawlessness. I can do whatever I want. I'm the end and of myself. It doesn't really matter what God thinks because after all, he'll forgive me in the end. We need the love of God and the fear of God. The fear of God, that awe, that's, that's what it's really all about. So to fear God and obey him, to tremble at his word. We have lost the trembling of God's word in Jesus' church. That's right, we have. Uh, I remember years ago, I was, uh, I was speaking at a church. It was a little country church, a holiness church. And um, I, I went there to speak. They were having, there was revival week. And I remember when I was there, the people, uh, when, when I read the word, they stood up. And the first time it happened, it actually startled me. There are still churches now that whenever you read from the Bible, everybody stands up out of reverence because that is the word of God. And, and then when you're done reading the word and it goes back to maybe... Uh, exegetical, like pulling out the word, describing it, everybody sits down. There are still places that revere the word. Now, I'm not saying we should go back to that, that rule that everybody has to stand up. But what I am suggesting is that we have gotten a little too far away from revering God's word, from trembling, from the alarm clock, from the shaking, from the, from the it's, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. That's what I'm talking about. Do we have a respect for God's word? So here we go. We're going to jump into the big idea. Those who fear God will obey his word. Number one is, number one is immediately, immediately. In Luke chapter nine, there's a story here. And, uh, and Jesus said to somebody, and this is the record. He said, he said, come follow me. But then the first response was, first let me. The second person that heard him about this, um, and, and Jesus said, and said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first, let me. There's always a first let me to the response that some people have. May I suggest to you, this, this hinders the fear of God in our lives. What's the first response when the alarm clock goes off? To hit snooze, to hit snooze again, to hit snooze again? Or is it when the alarm clock goes off, I get out of bed? <laughs> now, now, I'm not trying to create a legalism about the way you get out of bed in the morning, but I am suggesting that when we encounter the Word of God, there's such a trembling that we say, okay, God, 
there's going to be no first let me. I know God wants me to forgive somebody, but first let me wallow in it and get three people to agree with me. I know that God wants me to love my enemies, but you know what? Let, let me prove to some people why I'm right and they're wrong first. I know that God wants me to die to myself and love my wife the way that Jesus loves the church, but first let me prove to her that she's wrong and I'm right. All those first let me's get in the way. I'm going to give to God. I'm going to give financially, but first let me get enough money in the bank. First let me get everything in order. Whatever the first let me is in our lives must go. What we need to have is a, when we come to church, when we encounter the word of God, every morning when you read, every time we go to a small group, and every time we encounter teaching, our, our response should be, God, my answer is yes before you even ask. Before you ask, whatever you ask, it's yes. I'm going to do it immediately here. Abraham, let's look at an example. Abraham, the father of our faith, way back in Genesis chapter 22, God asked this man, Abraham, who had a long-awaited son show up. God promised him a son, and it took decades for it to happen. And when it did happen, God says, I want you to sacrifice my, your son for me. What? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it says that early the next morning, verse 3, the next morning, so our response when we encounter God's word shouldn't be first let me, but it's the next morning, what am I going to do? Later on, because Abraham obeyed God immediately the next morning, what did it consider him? It considered him the fear of God in verse 12. For now I know that you truly fear him. Why? There was an immediate response. That's what it is. In Psalm 119, David, I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. That means eager, with excitement, and enjoyment, with haste. See, I want to obey God immediately. The alarm has sounded. I am, I've woken up. Listen, I, yes, I want the love of God to keep me away from the legalism, but there should be an immediate response of my answers. Yes, God, no matter what you ask, I'm going to do it joyfully. Come on. That's where I want to live here. The person who fears God obeys immediately, even when it doesn't make sense. That's right. A slow or neglectful response to God is a sign of a lack of fear of God. So when we have procrastination and we justify our procrastination and it's really disobedience because we don't obey immediately here, there's something wrong here. I'm going to do it immediately, even at times it doesn't make sense. Let me give you the most practical example. It's with our finances. What do you mean if I give 10% of my income, $10 out of every 100, $1 out of every 10, $100 out of every, every 1,000? What does that mean? I'm going to do it even though it doesn't make sense because I'm going to do it immediately because I'm going to obey God's word and the alarm has gone off. I'm trembling at him today. When does it not make sense? Well, how about in, in Jesus? spits in the mud, rubs it on somebody's eyes. That doesn't make sense, but do it immediately. Come on, yeah. How, how about walking around walls of, of Jericho in the Old Testament and being quiet? Doesn't make sense, but do it immediately. Forgiveness, forgiving somebody. When you think you're right, do it immediately and extend that forgiveness. Loving those who per persecute you. Loving those who are different than you and have different mindsets than you. These are things I struggle with, but I need to do it immediately, even when it doesn't make sense. The alarm has sounded. I fear God and I obey him because I have a reverence to God. I know God has my best in mind. Wow. Okay, those who fear God will obey his word, first of all, covered immediately. Second here, completely. Yeah, completely. Now, those of us in the United States and the Western mindset, we are very benefit-oriented, not obedience-oriented. 
Now, how often would we, would we see, um, would we line up for 30 minutes before a meeting started because it was on holiness or obedience or repentance? Usually when it's about getting blessed or, or getting more joy, we'll line up early. Entertain me, come early. How many books in a Christian even uh, websites and how many books have been released on obedience that are in the top 10 sellers? <laughs> not many. Because we're benefit-oriented, not obedience-oriented. Yeah, but I want to obey completely. The Apostle Paul is a good example in Acts chapter 20. He's, he says, listen, I need to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me. It could be jail. It could be suffering. It could be persecution. But I am going to go and fulfill the plan of God. Listen, because my life means nothing to me unless I use it for fulfilling God's plan. See, the Apostle Paul had a completely, and it doesn't matter if I'm going to, I'm going to have a pain or suffering, I'm going to obey. Doesn't matter if I even understand it. Doesn't matter if it has a benefit that I can't see. I fear God and I'm going to do what he asked me to do. Jesus is referenced in Hebrew chapter 5, verse 7. And it talks about while he was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears. I believe referring to the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, where Jesus sweat drops of blood, where he was crying out to God. And as he cried out to him to rescue him, God heard his prayers because of his reverence to God. God heard him out of reverence. Do we come to God even in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our pain, we never lose the reverence and fear for God. May we never lose that. And then we're told in 1 Peter 4.1 that since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude. What attitude did he have? Not my will, but yours be done. Count me in. I'm going to do what you want me to do, God, even if there's pain, even if there's suffering, even if it doesn't make sense, even if I don't see the benefit I am going to still obey out of reverence to God. Why? A good example of that is in Luke 17, 10, red letters, Jesus' words. That's what I mean by red letters. So you also, when you have done all that you commanded, say that we're just, we're an unworthy servant. I've only done what my duty. I have a duty to obey God and I want to do it. I want to do it immediately. I want to do it completely. It's just, that's what I do. That's how I do it. That's why I do it. Come on, even sometimes when it, when it doesn't make sense, I am still going to do it. That's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to do it. That's why I'm going to do it. Listen, the fear God and obey, and obey. That's why it's so important here. So let's talk about joyfully. Yes, joyfully. I'm going to read an entire psalm to you. Psalm 128. And in context, it talks about those who fear God. And I want you to see the joy and the results. See, Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured the cross. He obeyed the Father out of reverence. And God heard him. See, I trust God. God with what's going to happen. I don't trust myself. I'm going to trust in Him. Psalm 128. How joyful are those who fear the Lord, who follow His ways. You can tell somebody who's following God because there's a joy about them. There's an ease about them. There's a God got this about them. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous you'll be. God wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to have fruit in our lives. Fruit that demonstrates a life that is completely in submission to Him. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine, grapevine, flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous, 
a young olive trees as they sit around your table. The fruit that results. That's what this is all about. When we fear God and obey him, he wants to bless us with there's a joy. See, many people have the, that, that obedience is control and obedience is constrictive. When God has the obedience of God as a joy, it's a blessing. It's fruitful here. Yeah. That is the Lord's blessing, verse 4, for those who fear him. Yeah, come on. May the Lord continually bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem pro prosper as long as you live. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. What I believe, and when it talks about Jerusalem and Israel, God's people, and even Jerusalem in this context is the place that you live. When there's a community of believers, when God's people in general in any geographic location are living out the fear of God, there's a blessing on those people. There's a blessing on the land. There's a blessing in that community here. So as we go along the road, we need the fear of God to keep us on the road. We need His love and we need His fear. And when we have both of those, we can trust in the Lord with all our hearts. We can do those things. Yeah, that's what this is all about. There's a joy attached to it. I want to let you know that you can think about the commands of God and have joy in your heart. So this is the deal. We need to, we need to check ourselves, and this is what I'm asking you to do. Look at your lives. Is there any parts of your life that you're saying, like, like let me first go do this? Are there any parts of your life that maybe, that maybe it, it, the next morning you, you didn't get around to what doing it? No, the alarm clock has sounded. There's a trembling to God's word. There's a blessing of God's word. There's the fear of God on God's word. I'm going to do it immediately. I want to do it completely. That means if there's no benefit for me, I'm still in it. Even if I can't see it or doesn't make sense, I'm still going to do it. Listen, even, no matter what, I am in it. I'm all in, and there's a joy. I want to close up our time today by reading a story about Jesus here. And, and it's an awesome, awesome story here. Luke chapter 6, Jesus' words here. Let's look at these together. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord? Now, first of all, it wasn't that Jesus had a stuttering problem. Did he really say Lord twice? Typically, in, in, in the times that the Bible was written, whenever you see something written twice, or even three times, it's emphasis. It's like exclamation points. For those who know me know I love exclamation points. You can never have enough of them. Or all caps. So, in, so this is like emotional intensity and emphasis. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Lord means the one in charge. That's what it really means. When you don't do what I say. Wow. Am I living in complete obedience to everything Jesus has said? I will show you what's, what's, what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teachings, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against the house, it will collapse and it will be in a heap of ruins. Many times in our lives, many times, our life ends up in a heap of ruins because we didn't have the foundation of Jesus' words and obedience. The fear of God, reverence, awe, hallowed be thy name, loving what he loves, hating what he hates, knowing I'm going to live in obedience, knowing I'm going to stand before God, comes from a heart of obedience. And the difference in this, this, these two examples here, one had a foundation. I heard, the alarm clock went off, and I obeyed. One, the alarm clock went off, and I hit snooze. Didn't do it immediately. Didn't do it completely because I didn't see the benefit. And didn't do it joyfully. And we wonder why our homes, our communities, 
are, are, are the places we live are in such a place of ruins, we have no foundation. And that foundation is obedience. That's a blessing. That's why at Bridge City Church, that's what we want for you. To experience the blessings of God that come from the fear God and keep His commandments. That's a blessing. There's a blessing attached to this. That's the difference between these two people here. We don't want to get into legalism, but we don't want to fall into the ditch of lawlessness. I want us to walk on the road where the Word of God is revered and we obey Him immediately and completely and joyfully and watch what God will do. I believe there's those listening right now that God wants you to take a step of faith in your life. No matter if it's in your home, in a relationship with your children or with your marriage or with your with, with obedience and purity to that, or, or with your finances, or with your work, or your health, take that step of faith and just say, I'm going to obey God. And if there's an area of your life, any area, where you know God has asked you to do something, and you've encountered His Word, but you haven't done it, all you need to do is go back to Him and say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive me for not living in obedience to you. Forgive me for not obeying immediately and completely. Allow me the chance now, God, to go and make it right. And if you'll do that, I believe the blessings of God are going to follow you and your life. I believe that with all my heart. I hope and pray that this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that, you're, that, that in your devotion time, a heart of devotion, and that's what this is all about, devoting our hearts to the Word of God and experiencing Him in a real way and embracing all those hundreds and hundreds of commands that we encounter in the New Testament with joy. Watch what God will do. The next series that we're going to be going into is going to be all about following Jesus, following God, in looking at Jesus' words about what is a follower, what is a disciple, what is somebody who is completely devoted to Him. That's what this is all about, completely devoted to His Word. And so you're not going to want to miss next week. It's going to keep getting better. We're going to help you learn what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Allow me to pray for you now. Heavenly Father, I pray a blessing upon everybody who hears these words today. God, I pray, Father, for the grace of God that you would help us be, be those who fear you and obey you immediately, completely, and joyfully. Lord God, thank you for these great, awesome people that are listening and let their homes, their workplaces, their communities and families reflect and honor you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pastor Rick, for such an amazing message. It was an incredible addition to this Fear of God series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you want to make Jesus the forgiver of your past and the leader into your future, it's the best decision you'll ever make. I know it's the best decision I ever made. We just want you to just click that I want to know Jesus button and someone will reach out to you to pray with you. Absolutely. We want to thank you so much for spending this time with us, worshiping and getting a really amazing message from Pastor Rick. We love you all and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.